Now, in the online fishing community, we see our fair share of stupidity. Someone has a few beers, sees a picture of a guy with a donkey-sized fish, and gets a little jealous and has a keyboard warrior meltdown about the claimed size of the fish, or spews forth all of his self-imposed unquestionable rules of fish handling that every fisherman should abide by. I mean, seriously, if you're screaming at people in the comments section when they leave a lure in a fish's mouth for a photo, it might be time to put the bottle down. You know, we're living in a society. We're supposed to act in a civilized way. And with all the cries of, that's photoshopped. Seriously, how many smelly old pike fishermen do you think actually know how to use Photoshop? An even longer running and more serious example of the fishing community tearing itself to shreds has been taking place on the western locks of Ireland in the form of Inland Fisheries Islands Pike Management Policy on Designated Wild Brown Trout Fisheries, where, on certain locks, wild brown trout have been awarded special protection. What could possibly be wrong with that, you say? Well, it's not special protection from humans like we'd normally see in the form of marine sanctuaries and the like, but special protection from Esox Lucius, otherwise known as Northern Pike. These brown trout have been awarded special protection from a species they have successfully coexisted with for at least the last 8,000 years, according to the latest scientific DNA analysis. So, how is it that Inland Fisheries Island are protecting brown trout from pike? Well, when it comes to the food web, how do you stop a lion eating an antelope, a great white shark from eating a seal, or a human from eating a trout? Uh, sorry, uh, not human, I meant to say pike. How do you stop a pike from eating a trout? Well, you shoot the lion, you catch the shark, and you gill net and electrofish the pike. Standard operating procedures for gill netting of pike in this instance used to be listed on this page of the Inland Fisheries Island website although it seems that the links no longer exist. Luckily for me, I printed out a copy of this quite some time ago, and it goes to exhaustive detail about how pike are to be netted, measured, and dealt with according to size, with fish over 85 centimeters returned to the water immediately, and fish under 85 centimeters either smacked over the head with a lump of wood, or transported to another lock for release, where apparently the trout are tougher and aren't scared of the big bad pike. You may be aware of the shocking footage on YouTube of this netting being carried out where Inland Fisheries Island staff break every rule in their outlined procedure and destroy, either intentionally or not, some huge pike in the meantime. Uh, just one question. Any fish over 85 centimetres, are they returned back to the water again? No reply. These videos warrant an entire explanation on their own, so I won't go into it here. I'll leave the links in the description and I encourage you to check them out. And the other fish have been taken up to this building to be measured. <laughs> That's a strange one that. I can't see them taking the pike back out measuring them. Right. Strange. The oh. There's a whole load of pike in there, and there's one about 90. No, he'll not. Put him, put him in again, just Put him in. You'll be alright. Put him in, just I'll take him in. You'll be alright. You're the expert, are you? I, I am, uh -huh. I am. If you don't mind, I'll just put him in here, just. He'll be alright. He'll survive. Better than a barrel. If you're a pike fisherman who hangs out on the dot coms to check out the pike porn, you have no doubt come across the ongoing mudslinging match and sometimes guerrilla warfare tactics to spread propaganda from either the pro trout or pro pike side. And I'll be honest, occasionally I've thrown my hat into the ring when it comes to letting off a bit of steam in the comments section on this very subject. Unfortunately, it's like waiting for the next tweet from President Trump as to what comes next from the pro-trout, or should I say, anti-pike side of the argument. Why is it that I compare the anti-pike side of the debate to Donald Trump? Well, it's because both are inherently anti-science. You can't use hairspray!
because hairspray is going to affect the ozone. I'm trying to figure out. Let's see, I'm in my room in New York City, and I want to put a little spray so that I can... <laughs> right? But I hear where they don't want me to use hairspray. They want me to use the pump, because the other one, which I really like better than going bing, 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 I want to use hairspray. They say, don't use hairspray. It's bad for the ozone. So I'm sitting in this concealed apartment, this concealed unit. You know, I really do live in a very nice apartment, right? <laughs> but it's sealed. It's beautiful. I don't think anything gets out. And I'm not supposed to be using hairspray. All of this with the global warming and the, that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. A lot of it. If you don't want to take science seriously, then have a good time giving up all the first world technology that makes our lives so comfortable. Science makes models and testable predictions about reality. You know, the place where most of us live. Science is blind and doesn't care if you grew up fishing for trout or pike. It doesn't care if some old geezer down the pub told you that pike are better off as cat food. And it doesn't care if you like smoking a tasty piece of trout for dinner and doesn't care about your feelings. It is constantly updated with every piece of information that we learn. So today I'm going to be looking at some of the claims that have been spread all over the media recently by this article, and this article, and this article, this article, this article, this article, this article, this article, and this one, that are covering the latest incarnation of the anti-pike brigade in the form of Pike Are Predators campaign. They all tout the same uh, <coughs> facts and figures, so I'll use this one from the Irish Sun, as it's the most entertaining. Not known for its scientific content, I'm sure, but if you're going to be reporting on something that affects a huge number of fishermen from Ireland and abroad, you may want to delve into a little bit of fact-checking of your own before heading to the printers. So why don't we check it out point by point and see what we can find with a bit of research of our own. Trout battered. Well, just for a start, if you're battering trout before you deep fry it and eat it, um, you've got some questions to answer to. Sex-mad cannibal pike are killing off one of Ireland's most loved fish, and campaigners are fearing for wild brown trout stocks. Well, why don't we look at the uh, first claim they've got here, cannibal pike. It's a well-known fact that pike are cannibalistic, and a quick search on the internet will turn up plenty of awesome pictures of pike tearing each other to shreds. But surely that's a good thing. If pike are eating each other, that means it's one less trout getting devoured by the evil predator pike. So how about sex mad? Anyone fishing in England or Wales will be familiar with the coarse fishing close season. This runs from the 15th of March until the 15th of June, and is designed to limit the impact on coarse fish including pike, during the breeding season. Pike spawn around springtime, and it's very dependent on local water temperature being around 9 degrees. And even if spawning is successful, their eggs won't hatch if the water temperature drops below 6 degrees. Fertilisation and survival to the hatchling stage is low, and the free-swimming larva only have an approximate 5% chance of survival. That is, of course, without taking into account large flooding events, pollution, agricultural runoff, predation by native and introduced species, the list goes on. So, are pike sex mad? Well, with very specific spawning parameters that only occur once a year, I'd have to consider myself a bit more sex mad than they are. So, we're told that pike are killing off one of Ireland's most loved fish, the brown trout. Well, if I had to guess what Ireland's most loved fish were, as a stab in the dark, I'd say first place pike, then salmon, and coming in third would probably be brown trout. But it doesn't matter what I think on the subject, because I'm just a human with my own preferences and biases. That's why we turn to the real data, instead of Bing, Bing, Bing. <laughs> the socio-economic study of recreational angling in Ireland was produced by Tourist Development International by appointment from Inland Fisheries Island, and offers an amazing snapshot of recreational anglers in Ireland and those who travel from abroad to fish there, where they spend their money, what species they target, demographics, etc. So we can find out how loved the brown trout actually are. Let's have a look at participation rates among domestic anglers on day trips. Top spot is taken out by sea fishing, with brown trout fishermen in second place, followed up in third by pike fishing. 
As for overnight fishing trips taken by Irish fishermen, sea fishing again proving very popular, with coarse fishing in second place. Third place is the combined category of salmon and sea trout. And in fourth place sits the predator pike, beating brown trout fishermen in fifth. Okay, so there's only an extra 1,000 estimated anglers doing overnighters for pike than brown trout. But when we compare the spending habits from pike fishermen to trout fishermen, they far outweigh them. And it becomes a bit more of a significant figure. Especially when you've got them visiting your village, drinking beer in your pub, staying in your hotels and buying your groceries. A lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. A lot of it. And since I mention it, it seems that the people getting all fizzed up in their quest to destroy pike have now decided that they don't say the word pike on its own. It's now known as Predator Pike! Ah, Jesus. If I could only imagine them all sitting around actually planning that this is the terminology they're now going to use. Well, actually, I can imagine one of these meetings, and quite accurately. If we follow the numbers once again, we can get a bit of an idea of the anti-pike brigade demographic. If we head down to the fishing category by age in the same report, it shows that game angling is most popular with an older age group, with brown trout fishing ranked second highest in the over 55 bracket. So, let's have a look at the spearheads of the Pike Our Predators campaign and see if they match up with the 55 and over age bracket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks about right to me. This is no secret to the fly fishing community, which struggles with the old rich guy in a tweed jacket stereotype and poor recruitment of youngsters into the discipline, as shown on the chart. On the other hand, pike fishing ranks number two with the youngest age group, who are driving the lure fishing for predators craze, and God forbid, the catch and release of predator pike! So, what do we got next? Vicious pike eat nearly 20 kilos of trout a year? Bloody hell, that seems like a lot. Let's crunch those numbers later. They have previously attacked humans too, with shocking footage showing them biting unsuspecting punters. Oh my god, where are these videos? Okay, here's the links they've provided for us. Let's take a look at the human attacks. Alright, this guy's waving a uh, fish in front of it. And it grabs a fish. And... Oh, that pike! See that? It was diving for the human! Oh no, no, it's got a bigger pike behind him. Ah, sweet. Okay. This is a pike attacking a duck. Okay, that's also not an attack on a human. <laughs> Classic. He's a stupid cat. And uh, boom! Okay, that's not an attack on a human. This guy seems to have a piece of wood and throws it into the water. And boom! Okay, that's not an attack on a human either. This guy seems to be reviving <laughs> some sort of fish, and boom, pike attack. Well, luckily, no attacks on humans. Okay, all the articles seem to be spruiking that more than 200 anglers from all over Connacht last night launched the Pike R Predators campaign in Galway. Okay, let's check out the meeting, see if there was 200 concerned anglers present. So here we have the launch of the Pike R Predators campaign, and I've grouped these guys up in different colours, groups of 10, and going by my count, there's 90 people in this room. So either 110 of them were in the toilet while this photo was taken, or the group is prone to a little bit of exaggeration. More than double in this instance. Okay, what's next? Then they trot out top London-based environmental scientist, Dr. Roderick O'Sullivan. I'm not exactly sure what makes him a top scientist, I could only find traces of a self-published thesis he wrote back in 1989 in regards to salmon farming, and no sign of him publishing any peer-reviewed scientific research, which is something you'd expect from a top scientist. Alas, I think he may be more of an activist than a scientist, and prone to some slight exaggerations himself. Here he is giving his scientific opinion on farmed salmon. So do you eat farmed salmon? If you gave me hundred pounds to eat a slice of farm salmon, I would refuse it. In fact, even if you gave me a thousand pounds, I would still refuse it. Thanks for the offer. Now that's some cutting edge science right there. Pike prefers trout to most other fish. And it is really a, a eating machine. And it goes into these frenzies of attacking. 
And if we take Loch Corb, for example, every year, an average size pike, let's say 56 centimetres, will eat 18 kilograms of trout. And for some reason, it seems that they want us to know that he is a London-based scientist, like it's some sort of amazing credential to be based in an overpriced traffic jam. And if the Pike Are Predators campaign are so proud that their top scientist hails from London, then why do they cry wolf when anyone else from mainland UK weighs in on their Irish debate? So, Dr O'Sullivan warns, stocks of wild brown trout are facing wipeout in the West of Ireland lakes due to the proliferation of predator pike. If it's allowed to happen, the implications for the ecosystem, the western fisheries and local tourist economy will be enormous. The articles don't go into any more detail as to how he reached these conclusions. Surely, if the trout have lived alongside pike for at least the last 8,000 years, the pike would have wiped them out a long time ago, right? Hell, the Inland Fisheries Island webpage has even listed pike as a native species. Get with the program, guys. Surely an environmental scientist would be familiar with the concept known as trophic cascade, otherwise known as what happens when you remove a top predator from a food web. Here's Dermot Ogle discussing this with me on the Predator Podcast. You've got those so-called designated trout fisheries that now they claim are overrun with bream. Oh, wow, well, because there's no bloody pike around, maybe. Because there's no pike to cull them. And they'll also <laughs> whinge really loudly about the roach explosion or the perch explosion. Our roach aren't even native to Ireland. And yet they're uh, up on the likes of Loch Con and Loch Cullen. They're absolutely overrun, overrunning these waters. And yet they're still killing pike. And nobody's put two and two together and come up with the proper answer in that they're actually taking away the one single natural actually do something about the roach or the bream or the perch and they're leaving these roach to run riot which will directly compete with the food source that exactly the trout and the salmonoids are looking for it's just it's just a no-brainer really so on to one of the more shocking assertions of the article where it quotes martin Kenevy, one of the heads of the pike are predators campaign as saying that predator pike are eating wild brown trout stocks like never before And predator pike eat as much as 40 pounds of wild brown trout a year. Now, I don't know what's making the pike eat stocks like never before. I don't know what happened uh, in the 8,000 years previous. But uh, eating as much as 40 pounds of wild brown trout a year seems like a lot. And after exhaustive scouring of the available data, I just couldn't find these figures in any of the research concerning the pike's diet. So I thought, why not go to the source and hit up the Pike Are Predators campaign organisers Uh, excuse my pronunciation, the Connacht Angling Council. So I dropped them a line and they respond within the hour with a link to the Loch Corrib Brown Trout and Pike Policy document submission, which is what the pro-trout or anti-pike side submitted to Inland Fisheries Island for their current review of the pike policy, essentially putting forward their uh, proof that pike need to be culled to save the brown trout from extinction. So after a few hours of reading through the document, uh, I wasn't exactly sure if anyone has actually proofread this thing before submitting it. It has a large number of very obvious contradictions. As an example, let's head to the summary of the submission where it concludes, pike that have become piscivorous, in other words, they eat fish, show in the presence of varied prey species such as roach or perch, a preference for salmonoids, a preference. Okay. Then so let's head up to page 31 of the same paper and see what their numbers say. Now don't even get me started on where this data came from to make this graph. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so for pike over 60 centimetres in this sample, perch, roach and wild trout were in the top three. Now, for some reason, perch and perch fry have been listed separately. The same for roach. I don't get it. Okay, so total of perch is 26%. And total of roach is 22%. And compare that to wild trout at 16%. Hmm, so their conclusion was, pike that have become piscivorous show in the presence of varied prey species, such as roach or perch, a preference for salmonoids. A preference for salmonoids. A preference. 16% of trout. 26% perch. What about the poor bloody perch? So I head back to their Facebook page not long after and ask for more specifics. 
which gets met with radio silence. That was 13 days ago now, so another prompt and no acknowledgement. Now I send them a direct message that gets read within the first half hour that I sent it. Surely the claim that pike can eat 40 pounds of wild brown trout a year is the cornerstone of their campaign. It's plastered all over every piece of coverage they get. So, surely they'd have the numbers ready to go, ready to hand out to any journalist or person willing to question their campaign. But, uh, nah, I think I'm going to be waiting a while. Humans definitely seem to have quite a taste for trout these days. Some of the footage from earlier was taken at Loch Con. This is one of the spots that pike are gill netted because the brown trout population is apparently under threat. So, if a hungry human wanted a feed of trout, you would expect that they'd have to go looking elsewhere, right? Well, this is the shocking part. Not only are people allowed to catch and kill wild brown trout from Loch Con, there is no bag limit whatsoever on how many you can take home and stuff into your freezer. If you head there for a week and go fishing, catch 50 of these supposedly under threat, near extinct trout, you can fillet them right there on the spot and feed them to your bloody mongrel dog, no questions asked. So come on guys, you have to ask yourself, is it really the pike that are causing all the damage? So let's head over to the Inland Fisheries Islands page and find the latest piece of scientific research titled The Diet of Pike in Irish Watercourses. And this is the layman's edition as well, so even fishermen can understand it. It's the latest and most comprehensive piece of research in the field having been conducted in 2014. Using CSI-like technology of stable isotope analysis and stomach content analysis to provide the most accurate and some would argue only scientifically based study into the diet of pike due to one of the most powerful aspects of scientific rigour that's been imposed upon it, the peer review process. Scholarly peer review is the process of subjecting a scholarly work, research or ideas to the scrutiny of others who are experts in the same field before the paper is published in a scientific journal. In other words, a bunch of scientists who weren't involved in the study have looked through it and they say it's legit. If, if, you, if you base medicine on, on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works. Bitches. <laughs> Okay, great. So we have this new research that inland fisheries themselves took part in to finally figure out if the pike are slaughtering trout in huge numbers, eating their souls, and sending them extinct. So, drum roll, please. Ah, okay, that's pretty boring. I'm looking, and I have to say, I'm not seeing it. It's a very interesting read, and it can definitely give you a pike fishing lesson if you take notice. As it would seem, pike eat the resources most readily available to them. So, if a lake has mostly roach, they mostly eat roach. And if a river has mostly perch, they mostly eat perch. You get the idea. So, the upper part of the chart shows what prey species were most numerous and a few of the sites studied. And the bottom pies show what was found in the pike's stomach at those same locations. Do you notice the tiny little orange slice in the left-hand column? Yeah, that's trout. Pike eat what's in front of them. So the old adage of match the hatch rings true. They're not going to preferentially hunt down and devour salmonoid species. In this study, overall roach and acillus were the most important food sources found in the pike's stomachs. And according to the internet, acillus is some kind of freshwater crustacean, commonly known as waterlouse. So pike are spending most of their time munching on little bugs? Well, surprisingly, invertebrates accounted for 45.5% of all stomach contents. Maybe pike fishers should put away the jerk baits break out the long wand, and tie up a few waterlouse flies. So digging through pike guts wielded some interesting results. Interesting yet flawed. The researchers point out that by using their stomach content analysis technique, you have to be aware of a bias due to the weight of some food items found in the pike's stomachs. Trout were encountered at five sites and in nine stomachs, and were only deemed important in Loch Sheelan. And this is where the flaw in the sampling method comes to the fore. The trout only had an occurrence rate in the stomachs of 7%, but their weight contribution to the diet was 48%. This was due to two large, undigested trout found in the stomachs, highlighting the bias when using stomach content analysis by itself. So two large, half-eaten trout can really skew the data, when most of the pike have been chowing down on bugs like Bear grills. 
But hang on a second. If these modern stomach content analysis techniques have identifiable flaws, then what did they do back in the good old days? Herein lies the problem. If the stomach content studies that IFI use and the Pike Are Predators campaign use in regards to the Pike Management Program, they have never been internationally peer-reviewed. They were produced in-house by IFI and are more akin to opinion pieces based on the author's own experiences and biases. Hell, one of these old fish surveys even goes so far as asserting that pike don't feed pelagically. Seriously, I've fished in Ireland trolling for pelagically feeding pike in 20 metres of water and had a hell of a time. But according to the science of the pike management fantasy land, this is impossible. Go right down his gulp. Beautiful. The next step is to go real CSI Miami and knock it up a notch with stable isotope analysis to have something to compare the stomach content data to. Heard the saying, you are what you eat? Well, that's exactly it. Take a sample of pike flesh and see what it's been built out of. Elements such as carbon and nitrogen analyzed in this study vary in mass due to the differences in their structure. If a pike eats a lot of perch, he will be made out of more isotopes with a mass matching that of perch, and so on. And, as boring as it may sound, not a lot in this study stood out. As delicious as trout are, the pike don't seem to agree. So the trout fishermen should be jumping for joy, right? It doesn't matter if pike were found with either invertebrates or fish in their stomach. They were built out of the same building blocks, representing the opportunistic behaviour of pike. Swim past him and you mince meat. They ain't gonna hunt down and devour trout preferentially. So with no help from the Pike R Predators campaign, no matter how many of these friggin' papers I look through, old and new, good and bad, I just couldn't find that 20 kilos of trout number fitting in anywhere. Into any feeding ratios, graphs, tables, pie charts, nothing. It's literally a swamp of opinions, anecdotes and exaggerated conclusions to wade through if you want any sense of what the inland fisheries pike management policy is based upon. The people in the trenches at the Irish Pike Society have torn these old stomach content papers to shreds. Head to their website and check it out. You might want a strong drink for this one. It would make any passionate fisherman's blood boil. One by one, piece by piece, they break down these outright strange delusions and ask for the truth. These guys are leading the charge and trying to protect these precious locks, not just for pike fishermen, but for all those who care to visit these great wilderness areas. And at least they came to my aid when I was looking for this magical pike that eats, on average, 20 kilograms of trout every year. So if we use the Connarch Angling Council's figure of a pike eating 20 kilos of trout per year and using the <coughs> study that they gave me, that shows that trout make up 16% of a pike's yearly intake in a fishery that has other fish like roach and perch present. Therefore, 16% of the diet is 20 kilos. Then this pike would eat 125 kilograms annually. From there, we have to employ a food conversion ratio to get the weight of a pike that can eat 125 kilos of fish per year. Because if a pike eats one kilogram of fish, it doesn't put on one kilogram of mass. The conversion ratio in the past has been calculated at 4.7. So we take our 125 kilos of food eaten, divide that by 4.7, and end up with a pike weighing 26.6 kilos or 58.64 pounds? Holy crap! So, if the Connarch Angling Club are stating that their average pike is eating 20 kilos of trout per year, that means the average pike in their lake is 58.64 pounds. Where is this lock, and how do I get a day ticket? Unfortunately, these claims and the Inland Fishery Islands current pike management policy is based on a whole swath of outdated, flawed, non-peer-reviewed data and anecdotal evidence. There is an old saying in science that the plural of anecdotes is not data. The Inland Fisheries Island website these days lists pike as a native species. Thank God. So, I'll head there to let them have the last word and hopefully they heed their own advice. But I'm not heading to the Inland Fisheries Island page you see today. Let's use some tricky internet hacking skills to visit their site back on July 27th, 2010. Back when they thought pike were an invasive species. 
Scientific evidence indicates that naturally occurring fish species within any geographic area have evolved over long periods of time and have adapted themselves to thrive in the natural aquatic conditions pertaining to that area. It therefore makes sense, from a fisheries perspective, to endeavour to restore waterways to as near as practical a natural state. In other words, pull your bloody gill nets out, burn them, do everything you can to limit human impact on the locks and help these ecosystems return to their natural state for everyone to enjoy.